This is section 12.4 and we're looking at finding the volume of a prism and cylinder. First of all, the standard formula for the volume of a prism is the area of the base times the perpendicular height. So as we look at this first example, we're going to treat this front rectangle as our base. So the area of that base is 60 and then the height is the distance between this front base and the back base. So the height then would be 13 multiply 60 times 13 and we have 780. Now 60 would be the area so that would be units squared. 13 is just a linear measurement so that's units. Units squared times units means we're dealing with units cubed when we have the volume. The next shape we have is a hexagonal prism. We want to find the volume of this shape. So once again it's the area of the base. Regular hexagons are nice because we can just do 8 squared root 3 over 4. That would give us the area of one of these regular triangles, but there's six of them. So this gives us the area of that base times the height of the prism, which is 3. And if we simplify all that, we get 288 root 3, which is approximately 498.83 units cubed. And the next one, we have a square prism. We could be even more specific and say that it is a regular prism because all of those faces of the prism are congruent to each other and we have that one diagonal of one of the faces is six. So if we were just to focus on that one square, since this length is six, that means that the area of that square is going to be the diagonal squared divided by two. So the area of this base is 18. So the volume of our prism here is 18 times the height. The height is a distance going from this front base to that back base. In other words, it's the length of this side, which would be the length of one side of that square. So if we look at this triangle to 45, 45, 90, the hypotenuse is 6, so we divide by root 2 to give us this length, which is going to be 3 root 2. 18 times 3 root 2 would be 54 root 2 and that is approximately 76.37 units cubed. A cylinder is not a prism, but we treat it like one. So instead of saying that the volume of the cylinder is base times height, we know that this area, the base is a circle. The area of a circle is pi r squared. So for a cylinder, we can say that the volume is pi r squared times the height. We have a cylinder. The diameter is 12. The height is 20. So if we plug those numbers into the formula, we'll get a total volume of 2,261.95 units cubed. For the next one, we have another cylinder. The height of the cylinder is 4, and 50 is telling us that the perimeter of this circular base is 50, or in other words, that the circumference is equal to 50. That doesn't tell us what the radius of the circle is directly, but we can set the 50 equal to 2 pi r. Do a little bit of algebra. Divide both sides by 2 pi. So the radius is 50 over 2 pi, which would simplify down to 25 over pi. So that is the radius of that circular base. So now when we're trying to find the volume, the volume is pi times our radius squared times the height of 4. And if we calculate all of this up, we get an answer of 2,500 over pi, which is approximately 795.77 units cubed. The last example here is a cylinder with a hole in the middle of it. Now, whether or not the top has a base on it or doesn't, the volume is still going to be the same. Imagine that this cylinder was entirely solid, and then we cut out the middle part of that. It's still going to be hollow whether or not there's a cap or base on the top or not. So the volume of this shape is going to be the volume of the big cylinder before anything was cut out minus the volume of that small cylinder that got taken out of the middle. So the volume of the big cylinder is pi times the radius of 7 squared times the height minus the volume of the small cylinder is pi times 1 squared times the height. That's 588 pi minus 12 pi 576 pi would be your exact area, and that is approximately 1,809.56 units cubed. Here's the last.